It looks really cool. It says the Poka Tree Forest. It's danger piranhas. There's piranhas. This is really cool. Okay, let's see what this is. What is this? This is really cool. Oh, look, I think that's a tribe. Is it a tribe? Could be. It's a game. Drive to connect. Into where which is it? This is really cool. Oh my goodness. What is this? I think that we're talking about. Oh. And then there's a ship. That's really cool. What's this? Let's see what this game is. Um. Cocoa pod. No. No. pod? Water? No. Um, sugar, honey, maybe? No, I think that's it. Into the cup. Oh, you drag it into the cup. The mayor roasted the cocoa beans over the fire and then used stones to grind them into a paste. Yeah, yeah, we'll see for. Oh, okay, okay, could be the same for land about yeah, um, I was it fine of you to I think water. Mm -hmm. Chocolate first and water. Um, let's put honey in, I guess. Let's put honey in. The Maya used honey to sweeten their food. They yeah, also yeah, used honey. it to treat illnesses. Chili, let's see. The Maya flavoured their chili with... Flavoured their chocolate with chili. Corn? The Maya mix corn paste into their chocolate drink to make it thicker. I've done all of them. Oh, it's bubbling. Okay, I can't add these two. I'm gonna... I borrowed some money from my father. To go into business as a tea dealer and coffee roaster. I took over the shop and installed this large plate glass door. Some of my customers have seen some samples of tea. These drinks were considered as wholesome alternatives to alcohol, which we as Quakers strongly disapproved. In my spare time, I experimented with preparations of cocoa beans and chocolate, which I could sell at the shop. Soon I had to rent a warehouse in nearby Crooked Lane, where I could manufacture these products on a larger scale. At first, it was very difficult. Because I My brother Benjamin joined me, and together we formed Cadbury Brothers. With more space, we could now prepare a cocoa powder and an eating chocolate that could be packed and sold. Soon after, my eldest son, Richard, joined the company. Having Richard with us made all the difference. He saw to it that the quality of our cocoa improved, introduced new products, and even opened a shop in London. Our efforts were rewarded when we received our first oil warrant from Queen Victoria. That was when my younger son, George, joined us. George introduced many benefits for the workforce, such as half-day holidays, a sick club, and many improvements in the factory. And Richard, your new designs for our packaging were a huge success. Well, we had to try something different, just to get ourselves recognized, Father, as we were still a small company. Our aim was to manufacture only the highest quality cocoa and chocolate. I know, but I could tell you some stories of less scrupulous producers who added brick dust to their cocoa. Ours was still gritty, but we only added sugar to take away the bitter taste and starch to absorb the fat. However, George had heard of a new kind of cocoa press. He went to Holland in 1866 saw the press being used and brought one back. The Van Houten Press. Oh yes, Father. You see, because we could extract more of the cocoa butter, there was no need for more additives. Not only was our, our cocoa essence more palatable, but also output increased. The Bridge Street factory was now too small to cope, and we had to expand somewhere else. For some time, George and I 
had shared the same vision to build our new factory in a garden setting, away from the smoke and grime of the city. We called our new factory Bourneville. We opened our new factory in 1879 and were faced with many more challenges as the size of our workforce increased. As the company prospered. Are you in a song now I know